Son Adiv Galer. Friends, welcome and thank you for joining us on the occasion of St. Patrick's Day. Many of you will have watched our virtual St. Patrick's Day reception last year, and we are pleased to continue this online gathering in 2022. This year marks a century since the foundation of the Irish Free State. The men and women who a hundred years ago met in Dáil Éireann, our Parliament, faced many, many difficult decisions. It is a testament to them and successive generations that Ireland is a flourishing democracy and a proud member of the European Union. We cherish the peace that our island has achieved, which is sadly still just an aspiration for many people around the world. I would like to reflect on Ireland's role in global affairs, especially as we currently sit on the United Nations Security Council. Ireland continues to be a committed actor on the international stage, especially in our efforts to promote peace and protect human rights around the world. Ireland is at the forefront of multilateral efforts to bring an end to the terrible conflict in Ukraine and to hold Russia accountable at the UN, at the OSCE, and via the International Criminal Court, and as a committed member of the European Union. Our government is providing extensive assistance to the Ukrainian people, including significant funds for humanitarian action and providing shelter to our Ukrainian friends. I now have the honour of introducing the Taoiseach Michal Martin for his St. Patrick's Day message. I'm delighted to wish our friends across the United States a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Our National Day is special for Irish citizens and Irish Americans of all ages across the United States. While the last two years may have kept many of us physically apart, our bonds of friendship remained steadfast. A very happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. Ta Ahasarm, a very kind living of her count winter in the herden, a slaw the podrig or calore going in our is again. Gachoit in a federal law, ta our winter egg ach hangen lesh and bubble ma gourd, or bubble egg ach hangel len a chela, 
agus ere eg ach hangel leis an daun. Mar sin féin, ta scá ar ar galúra imlíne leis an dén lahas agus riel dlí fí vagart. I am delighted to be able to speak to you today on behalf of Ireland. Our celebrations this year are tempered by the reminder that democracy and the rule of law can never be taken for granted. And so, this year especially, let St. Patrick's Day be a moment to recall and to extol human fellowship, empathy and solidarity, true values of a republic. For let there be no mistake, this is a decisive moment for democratic freedoms and values everywhere. 100 years ago, our country was taking our first decisions as a sovereign democratic state. An early act on the international stage in 1923 was to join the League of Nations. Multilateralism and international cooperation has shaped who we are from the very start. In 1955, we joined the United Nations. Three years later, our service as international peacekeepers began. Ireland today has the longest unbroken peacekeeping record of any nation in the world. Peacekeeping is a proud tradition ingrained in our culture. 50 years ago, we voted to join what is now the European Union, a union formed in the ruins of war to create unbreakable bonds of peace across Europe. Our European Union membership has added new rich layers of identity, of belonging and of solidarity. And so, on this St. Patrick's Day, I say with confidence on your behalf, we reassert our unequivocal commitment to democratic and humanitarian values by standing with the people of Ukraine. We again declare our unshakable support for the rule of law. We are one with the people of Ukraine. Their freedom is our freedom. Their struggle is our struggle. Friends, after two long years, we are emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic. We have learned a lot about ourselves. We know we are resilient. We've also seen how much each of us depends on the other. We are facing new challenges, but we will face them together and we will prevail. Our people are reconnecting with their communities. Our communities are reconnecting with, with each other and Ireland is reconnecting with the world. That spirit of connection will guide us in the coming months. I believe that Irish people everywhere will respond to what is happening in Ukraine with the same energy, compassion and conviction that we have showed during the COVID crisis. We will be tested economically, personally, institutionally, but we will respond as a proud member of the community of democratic nations and as citizens of a republic. I would like to take a moment to pay a special tribute to Irish people across the world for the manner in which you have faced the pandemic. Ireland is immensely proud of how our people at home and abroad responded to the crisis with humanity, selflessness and generosity. Our healthcare workers, our aid workers and our peacekeepers all represent our country with great distinction. There are countless examples of our diaspora reaching out the hand of friendship and of care to the more vulnerable members of our community during difficult times. For that, I thank you. Over the past two years, the richness of Irish artistic output has kept alive a flame of hope, a welcome reminder of human potential when we felt most powerless. Ireland salutes you all. And now we're all called upon again in a new and terrible crisis. Together, we will rise to this challenge and the other great environmental and security challenges that face the world. We will work in unity to protect and restore international law and the principles of the UN Charter. We will redouble our efforts to ensure peace and stability across our European neighbourhood. We remember those we have lost in the pandemic. We will honour their memory by strengthening our bonds of community and implementing real change that reflects the important and often profound lessons we have learned. There is no strength without unity, a sentiment that has a special resonance at this time. We stand together and we stand with the international community of democratic nations. We stand for a better world 
and we stand against autocracy and oppression wherever they appear. We stand with Ukraine. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Tonight's programme will celebrate the many faces of Ireland in America. Our friendships, our community, our close economic ties, and of course our rich culture, which is showcased here through music, dance and poetry. You will hear from all seven of our Consuls General around the United States, who will highlight how Ireland is threaded through the rich tapestry of American life today. And I'm happy to announce that this year we will open an eighth Irish Consulate in the United States in Miami, Florida, further expanding our network across these United States. A second significant centenary this year is the 100th anniversary of James Joyce's Ulysses. Ulysses stands not only as a great literary achievement, but as a fascinating depiction of Ireland on the cusp of its independence. My copy of Ulysses, acquired during a summer spent in Kansas City in 1974, has travelled the world with me during my 40 years of the Irish Diplomatic Service, the last four in Washington, D.C., as Irish Ambassador to the United States. And I've consistently deployed Joyce's novel liberally as an instrument of Irish soft power. Our consulates have programmes planned throughout the United States that will uh, touch on these two significant cultural events throughout this year. I hope that this reception will allow us all to feel part of St. Patrick's Day, regardless of wherever we are. Last year's virtual reception closed with a gorgeous preview of the new Irish Arts Centre in New York. We're delighted that this centre has now opened and is truly a home for Irish arts and culture in America. It's also a jumping off place for artists who wish to tour this country. We opened tonight's celebration with a video from the Irish Arts Centre in New York. A question I've asked in my career is where do I end and we begin? How are we connected? What's the space in between us and, and how do we overlap? It was Irish monks who invented the space between words. It's in the spaces, in those interstitial places, that interesting things happen. You start that creative quest, so to speak, and kind of fill in those spaces or travel from space to space as the piece unfolds itself. I don't need all the answers on stage. I need them to be sort of like to be, I need room for the audience to think and dream and dream things out. It's a normal human expression to try and understand emotions, things that have happened in your life, so being creative it helps you figure out the world. We have some of the best music coming out of this country right now, and the fact that we live where we live is the thing that actually affects and influences our music the most, I think. It would be hard not to hear the Irishness in it. I think Irish creative identity travels as easily as Irish people do, and we're everywhere. Irish creative identity is incredibly diverse in terms of subject, art form, and ambition. And the diaspora is a testament to that. Con Alien has a free of her in on tradition gaelach agus hom hobro do gavul meet obelta e shin a khorkon keen hoid locht fiachna nua in the hour the new irish art center to me is potential and possibility they're also trying to reach out in many different ways across different cultural milieus in a bigger way than before in a more inclusive way it's going to be brilliant because it'll just be a bespoke venue that will be able to facilitate any type of artwork that's coming out. So not just plays, it'll be musicians. Now it can be all the dance companies or physical theatre companies. So it just gives an opportunity for all that work to keep expanding in a space that's suitable for it. What's so great about the mission of the Irish Arts Centre is this wonderful, big, wide open set of arms. It's about community. It's been a place of real homeliness and comfort in New York, but also really exciting art that goes through there. 
When I think of Irish Art Center, I think of the idea of home. They create a space for community and conversation. It's also home in the conventional sense of a word, a really warm and welcoming space that people want to return to again and again. My name is Helena Nolan and I'm the Consul General of Ireland in New York. This year, our message to you for St. Patrick's Day is all about reconnecting, re-engaging and re-energising our friendships. And what better way than through the medium of culture. Here in New York City, we are blessed with an array of superb venues and performers, including the Irish Repertory Theatre and the New Irish Arts Centre. One of the best things about my role here is being able to get out and about again and meet and listen to our community, including at this lovely Wednesday lunch at the New York Irish Centre. We have a wonderful diaspora here, supported by dedicated community organisations and a spirit of volunteerism and giving back, which really rose to the challenge of the past two years. The story of Ireland in America is a rich and enduring one, including, of course, the story of the Irish here in New York. St. Patrick's Day is a moment to remember that history and honour the memory of those who came to America in generations past. This is the Irish Hunger Memorial, first created here 20 years ago in Battery Park. Every blade of grass, every piece of stone was brought here from Ireland to this new home. Dust from the World Trade Center rests in the foundations here. This place reminds us we are in an enduring partnership here in this great city. It is the perfect place to reflect on the legacy of Patrick and on our history. This is our past with a message for our future. This is the suffering that reinforces us. This is the beauty that inspires. This is our heritage and also our hope. This is Ireland in New York.
Hello, I'm Kevin Byrne, Consul General at the Irish Consulate to the Midwest, based in Chicago. I'm here on the campus of Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana, the center of one of the best Irish studies programs in the world, and also home to all things Irish in the Midwest. I'm here today to open this exhibition, Who Do We Say We Are? Irish Art 1922-2022. This exhibition is part of a broad initiative, States of Modernity, which marks the centenary of the Irish state and the 100th anniversary of the publication of Ulysses. An international series of exhibitions and events set in the Midwest here in Notre Dame, in Paris, in Rome, uh, and in Dublin, this initiative looks at the role of Irish culture, our music, our art, and our literature in the shaping of Irish identity and Irishness. It's also fitting that I'm here in Notre Dame because each year for the next five years, the Aer Lingus College Football Classic will be hosting two US college football teams to play a game in Dublin. This year, uh, Northwestern Wildcats will play the Nebraska Cornhuskers uh, in August in the Aviva Stadium. And next year, in August 2023, Notre Dame will play Navy in Dublin. This is one of the many reasons to make that return trip to Ireland to experience her great Cade Mila Falcha, her 100,000 welcomes. Thank you and happy St. Patrick's Day. Stately. Plump. Stately. Plump. 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 Buck. Plum. Stately. Plump. Buck. 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 Mulligan. Came from. Came from. Came from. Mulligan. Buck. Buck. Plump. Plump. Buck. 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 Mulligan. Came, Came from, from the stairhead. From the stairhead. From the stairhead. Stair Plump. Plump. Buck. Buck. Mulligan. Plump. Buck. Mulligan. Gen. Gen. Bearing. Bearing of. Bowl. Bowl. Of bearing. Came. A bowl. Bowl of lather. Bowl of lather. Bowl of, bowl of mulligan. Bearing. On which. On which. A mirror. mirror. Of lather. On which. A mirror. 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 Bowl. On which a mirror. And a razor. And a razor. Lay crossed. Lay crossed. Lay crossed. Stately. Plump. Stately. Plump. 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 Came from the stairhead. Came from the stairhead. From the stairhead. From the stairhead. Buck Mulligan. Buck Mulligan. Bearing. 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 A bowl of lava. Bowl of lava. Bearing. A bowl of lava. Mulligan. Bearing. A bowl of lava. Which mirror? Which mirror? Which mirror? Mirror. And a razor. Lay, lay, cross. Lather. 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 Mirror and a razor. Best. Stately. Plump. Stately. Plump. Plump. Buck. Stately. Plump. Buck. Mulligan. 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 Buck. Mulligan. Plump. Buck. Plump. 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 From the stairhead. From the stairhead. 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 Came from the stairhead. The boat. The boat. The boat. A bowl of lava. Lava. Bowl of Mulligan. Bearing a bowl of lava. And a razor. Mirror. Mirror. And a razor. Lay. Lay cross. And a razor. Razor. Lay. Lay. Lay cross. Stately plump. Buck Mulligan. Came from the stairhead. Bearing a bowl of ladder on which a mirror and a razor lay crossed. A courtier. My name is Robert Hull, and I've recently been appointed as the Consul General in Austin, Texas. I'm in Dublin at the moment with Angela Dorgan from Music from Ireland, who are bringing nine Irish acts to this year's South by Southwest Festival in Austin. It's the 20th year that Music from Ireland are bringing Irish artists to the festival. Angela, maybe you tell us about why South by Southwest is so important for Irish artists engaging in the US. So South by Southwest is probably one of the biggest global jumping off points. It's certainly the biggest jumping off point for Irish acts in the US. It's where media can come see them. It's where they can 
pick up bookings, bookers, festivals, get signed to labels, work with publishers and build their own individual profiles and that's certainly been the cases or our most recent successes being the likes of Hosier, Dermot Kennedy and Fontaine's DC would all have kicked off at this event. So um, there, there's such a huge amount of Irish culture in American culture we're the envy of most other export offices because the Irish do have that upper hand. So it's a festival we do very well at and we're really looking forward to going back. It's not only Irish music that will be showcased at the festival. We also have Irish films too. And South by Southwest can be an important opportunity to reconnect with business. But the relationships between Irish people and this region that are historic are also significant. These include the Irish who participated in the Battle of the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas, the Irish miners buried in Leadville, Colorado, who worked there during the silver boom in the 1800s, and the Irish who helped build the New Basin Canal in New Orleans, Louisiana. A special relationship for us is the relationship between the people of the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma and Ireland. And this year marks the 175th anniversary of the Choctaw aid donated to Ireland during the famine. We'll be marking this anniversary in a number of ways over the coming year, and more information will follow soon. We're excited about the opportunities this year to reconnect with our community and our partners across the South Central region in the US. And can I take this opportunity on behalf of the whole consulate team to wish everyone watching a happy St. Patrick's Day. On one bright March morning, I bid New Orleans adieu, and I took the road to Jackson Town, my fortune to renew. I cursed all foreign money, no credit could I gain. Punch your train. I stepped on board of a railroad car beneath the morning sun. I rode the rods to leave and I laid me down again. All strangers there. A dark girl towards me came And I fell in love with a Creole girl By the lakes of Pontchartrain I said, me pretty Creole girl Money here's no good. And if it weren't for the alligators, I'd sleep out in the wood. You're welcome here, kind stranger. Our house is very plain, but I never turn the stranger out. The banks of Pontchartrain. train.
took me into her mommy's house And she treated me right well There upon her shoulders And jet black ringlets fell To try to paint her Handsome was my Creole girl by the lakes of Pontchartrain. I asked her if she'd marry me. She said this could never be. For she had got a lover and he was fine. She said that she would wait for him And true, she would remain Till he'd return to his Creole girl By the lakes of Fonchurch Lane So fare thee well Bonnie own girl I never may see you more But I'll never forget your kindness In the cottage by the shore And at each social gathering A flowing glass I'll drink And I'll drink a health to me Creole girl By the lakes of Pontchartrain Los Angeles. I'm Marcella Smith, Consul General here at Ireland's Consulate for the Southwestern United States. I'm here outside the Academy Museum in Los Angeles, which is located just steps away from the consulate, and where our focus is on not just serving the needs of the Irish community in our region, but on the promotion of Ireland's dynamic and forceful creative industries. We do this in conjunction with Screen Ireland, who are based here with us and with Culture Ireland to support the post cultural officer here at the consulate. You know, there are many myths and legends associated with Ireland, but one that really rings true is that of the strength of our storytelling, whether it's through song, through art, through literature, and through film. The global embrace of our culture is a real testament to that strength. Our cultural output connects us with communities all across the globe and it allows us to share, explain, explore and celebrate who we are. So the consulate is proud to support the diverse range of Irish talent and creativity here in the US and we're proud to introduce new audiences to the extraordinary breadth of Irish culture and arts. We're proud too to support Ireland as a world-class location for international productions. Our award-winning and stunning scenery and locations, our established and world-renowned studios and our highly skilled film workforce all have meant that despite the challenges of COVID, 2021 is a record-breaking year for television, film and animation production activity in Ireland. And of course, we are very proud to support Irish on screen. This year's Oscar nominations include two of Ireland's finest, Kieran Hines and Jesse Buckley, nominated for their incredible film performances. And we'll be here cheering them on and hoping that soon we get to see their profiles take pride of place here at the Academy Museum. A very happy St. Patrick's Day to you all.
Georgia, friends, it's Misha Robord the Jusco, Ard Council in Heron in San Francisco. And it's my pleasure to speak to you today from the new Ireland House San Francisco, a state-of-the-art facility at the heart of the Bay Area, home to the Consulate, Enterprise Ireland, and a brand new Tourism Ireland office. This new building honours the deep Irish traditions across the Pacific Northwest, here in the Bay Area of course, but also across Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington State, Wyoming, and all the way to the northernmost tip of Alaska. It also reflects a dynamic modern relationship between Ireland on the west coast of Europe and the US west coast. Trade, investment, research and people to people exchanges have continued apace over the last two years, demonstrating the enormous resilience of our relationship. Ireland House San Francisco along with the new economic offices in Washington state are testament to the value Ireland places on our connections here and the potential we see for even greater collaborations into the future. From Team Ireland here in San Francisco, we wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day! Talk and talk it over Till I can hear a single word You make me out a traitor
I'm joining you from Dorchester Heights in South Boston and this is a special place because not only are we in the Irish heart of South Boston, we're also at the location where on the 17th of March in 1776 the Continental Army fortified this location with cannon and it ultimately led to the British forces withdrawing from Boston. Evacuation Day. So. The parade that happens here every March not only celebrates St. Patrick's Day and the city's extraordinary connections with Ireland, it also commemorates a key event in American revolutionary history. While it's always a good time to be Irish in New England, St. Patrick's Day provides us a special opportunity to shine a spotlight on our Irish organizations and the work that they do to support the thriving community here. In Ireland, we have a saying, means we live in one another's shadows and it speaks to our interdependence, to the deep communities we create and to the support we can provide one another. And as you can see, despite the challenges of the past year, our friends throughout the region have continued to celebrate traditions old and new, uh, to explore our culture and heritage in this most Irish corner of America and to make new connections. And I'm sincerely grateful to all of you and I really look forward to celebrating with you soon. Happy St. Patrick's Day, happy Evacuation Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day from the Consulate General in Atlanta. We are your team in the US Southeast. Ireland is investing in the South. Later this year, our network will grow with the addition of a new Consulate General in Miami. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Ireland doing business in Atlanta. Just like our own capital, Dublin, this city is captured in two words, dynamic and diverse. Atlanta is known as the capital of the Southeast. It's also known as the cradle of civil rights. The city is booming. It is one of the top 10 biggest metropolitan areas in the US with a population of over 6 million. People and businesses are flocking here from around the US, attracted by the young, educated and diverse population, pro-business climate, lower cost of living, and of course, the sunshine. Atlanta is home to many Fortune 500 companies and Irish companies are growing their presence here, particularly in the fintech sector. Irish companies employ almost 7,000 people in Georgia alone. Atlanta's airport is the busiest in the world. This is a connected place, including with a direct flight to Dublin. The birthplace of Martin Luther King, Atlanta has long been associated with leading the effort for racial equity. Ireland today is similarly characterized by its diversity. For both places, diversity plays a major role in our continued economic success. That's why we in Team Ireland USA are so proud to shine a light on the diversity of the Irish diaspora experience and of Ireland today. Banachti na fele wherever you're celebrating. Thank you. Frederick Douglass, the great American statesman, traveled to Ireland over 175 years ago and for the first time felt truly free. He imagined, I'm sure, in those days when he was in Ireland, that you would be coming behind him. That was part of his courage and his vision for his country and for our world. Frederick Douglass passed you a baton, and the question will be, during your part of the race, when you're carrying the baton, what will you do with it? Less than 6% of students currently studying abroad are black. In order for me to become more culturally aware and culturally sensitive to everything that's going on around me, I know that I need to get out there and I need to study abroad and travel abroad. To follow in the footsteps of Frederick Douglass, it's quite mind-blowing actually to like walk some of the paths that he's walked and feel that connection. After meeting his um, great-great-granddaughter, she has now informed me I could be great within my own means. I wanted this lesson to really be a group discussion. Every single person on this trip has taught me something. It's a really beautiful thing, actually. You, you can't get that anywhere else. I aspire to be the kind of leader that can use his skills that he learned to create some good trouble. I aspire to deconstruct systems of oppression. I aspire to be a change maker in the healthcare field. I aspire to be an exceptional educator. A learner, a teacher. I aspire to be a credit to my race, and to my family, and to the United States. I aspire to be extraordinary. Like Frederick Douglass in Ireland, you can come as you are and you can leave 
who you aspire to be.
as my assignment in Washington DC begins to draw to a close, I'll leave in August of this year. It is a joy to reflect on the relationships I've made across the United States these past four and a half years. This year, St. Patrick's Day in particular, will stand out with President Biden, a proud Irish American in the White House. This time last year, we were preparing for a fully virtual St. Patrick's Day. While the past months have not been without challenges, we have been able to resume many of our traditional in-person St. Patrick's Day events in many locations across the world this year, including the Taoiseach meeting President Biden at the White House. In Ireland, almost all pandemic-related restrictions have been lifted, and we look forward to welcoming those who wish to visit Ireland this year, where I can assure you, you will receive a very warm welcome. I want to close by saying thank you to all of the artists and performers who put this reception together. Their energy and creativity are a reminder of the richness of Irish culture and of the strong bonds that exist between Ireland and the United States. Gunnar Mina Mahagwiv, Agus Law, Ela, Podvig, Sonna, Dave, Galair. Did you think that I won't be okay right after you left me? Did you think that I drown myself in tears while I tuck myself to sleep? Well, goodbye to